Yeah, I have no clue how to use this thing. In this video, I bought an Ender 3 V2 3D printer so I could learn how to 3D print. The reason why I bought a 3D printer is because unlike a 2D printer, you can print physical objects that are more than just paper. This is an FDM 3D printer, which means it heats up a nozzle and melts plastic filament into many layers on the printing bed, and eventually it'll create a physical object. Now you're probably wondering, why'd you buy a 3D printer if you've never 3D printed before? And my question to you is why are you reading my script? The reason why I bought a 3D printer is because a lot of the hobbies that we have over here we made that have a lot of custom parts and this we can design parts and custom make our own parts we can use them on stuff like the go-karts or even in our personal lives on our cars or even stuff in our household the reason why I chose to purchase an Ender 3 v2 is because unlike the Ender 3 the v2 has a whole bunch of extra upgrades that the Ender 3 base model and the Ender 3 Pro does not have one of them being belt tensioners something that you would later have to add. It also has a redesigned screen. It has a toolbox. It also has a silent motherboard. This is important because 3D printers do make some noise while they are printing and a silent motherboard leaves it so that only the fans are making noise and nothing else. In this video, Kais and I will be assembling this 3D printer and eventually getting our first prints. I ordered this 3D printer in a bundle with four rolls of filament as the type of plastic that gets melted at the nozzle and printed onto the print bed. This is the exact brand and model as this 3D printer, so hopefully this will work the best for the specific printer. One of the colors I ordered was blue. I also got red, black, and white. So we should be pretty good on filament for a while. I actually received this 3D printer a week ago and I've just left it in its box so I could record this video. And now I'm really excited because I finally get the chance to put this together. Look that looks that. fancy. Oh, is this what I think it is right there? We'll wait, we'll save that for a second. Frame, little tool kit. Look at all of this hardware stuff. Cable ties, extra filament. Now what I was saving for. Oh, oh the screen. Nice. Ooh, look at this stuff right here. Is this the hot end? Yup. Oh boy. Future AJ here. It's been officially one week since I have assembled and started printing with this 3D printer. So this part of the video is a review on the Ender 3 V2. Here are three things that I like about this printer. First, I think it is a very good entry level printer. Even if you haven't worked with 3D printers before, as long as you do your research, watch videos, watch how to assemble it, watch how to use it, how to use slicers and all that stuff, should be fine when it comes to operating a 3D printer. Kaisa and I are kind of at an advantage because we've taken 3D modeling classes, so if we want to design something for ourselves, we have an upper hand on printing something that's custom made. The second thing that I like about this 3D printer is it is very modular, meaning that you can upgrade it yourself and make it to your liking. As you saw earlier in the video, I was printing these bed slot covers to kind of keep filament out of the little crevices of the printer. So, and these were printed with a 3D printer. I also printed this tool holder right here so I can hold all the tools that it comes with on the 3D printer without just having them stored in drawers now. Given that it is kind of like a base model 3D printer, it's not some 
from something super extravagant. There are a lot of upgrades that Creality, the company that makes this 3D printer, sells online for you to upgrade your 3D printer to make it to your liking. And the third thing that I like about this 3D printer is the interface. I think that this new redesigned screen is actually very friendly to the eyes, especially to somebody who hasn't used a 3D printer before. It is not touch screen, but it does have this dial and you can click it as a button. The screen on it is very user friendly. There's four big icons when you start it up that show you just about everything you need. It has print, it has prepare, it has controls, and it even has the info on the printing size of the bed. Now it's time to get into three things that I do not like about this 3D printer. Making this part of the video, I was trying to find three things I don't like about it, and it wasn't easy because there's so many pros to it. First thing that I don't like about it is there is a lot of upgrades you have to do. Now, a reason why I say have to do is because a lot of stuff is preventative fixes. So for example, the extruder is made out of plastic, which especially when you're pinching the extruder to put new filament in, that can easily break. There's some, there's like a seal in there that can crack over time and you should replace it with a metal one, which I did order. Along with my second thing is that the bed comes easily unleveled. Now, a lot of people have said that they were kind of surprised that Creality didn't put more time into bed leveling for the B2 because it's supposed to be an upgraded version of an Ender 3. The bed, I have to level just about every day. It only really takes once, like it doesn't become unleveled like when I'm removing prints, but I haven't used it yet today and I know I'm gonna have to level it before I use it again. There is a solution to this, just like the extruder, I also ordered metal bed knobs. I also ordered metal springs so that they'll help keep the bed in place. The third thing that I dislike about this 3D printer is the odd shape. I wanna get an enclosure for it because we do have pets that would like to play with this if it's in motion. I also wanna leave it so that it can print for multiple hours and I can leave the house without having to worry about it. And this tensioner is very far out, which you kind of win and lose on this end because although you do get a lot more printing surface, you have to make a custom enclosure and also it doesn't fit on the desk. This just overhangs over this desk that I just got, which it's fine, but if we have pets, it's not super easy. If this is your first 3D printer and you're asking yourself, should should I buy it? In my opinion is yes, you should buy it. It is very entry level. It is very easy to use. It's from a good brand that has a lot of resources of people who have also struggled with some of the stuff that you've struggled with with this printer. Really quick, I thought I'd show you guys some of the prints that I've done with this 3D printer. This is my first ever 3D print. It's a calibration cube, which is really good for finding imperfections and tuning your printer straight out of the box. This right here is my first ever failed print. It's the tool holder that I showed you guys earlier in the video. I use it when I'm showing people the printer to show how it works and how it fills the inside of objects. It's, it's a really good example for this. I know this wasn't a go-kart video. When we first started this channel, we wanted to start with go-karts and get some variety in there. This 3D printer opens up our ideas so much and will allow us to choose what we want to do in the future. We have some great ideas. I even put a little sneak peek in a short we posted not too long ago. This 3D printer is going to open up a lot of ideas for our videos in the future. So I hope you guys are going to be along for the ride and you guys can enjoy what we got coming for you guys. Thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down below if you have any recommendations about 3D printers, about like what I should do, what I shouldn't do, any tips and tricks. Also comment down below any things you think we should print. Thank you guys for watching. My name's AJ. You also saw Kaisen in this video. Thank you guys for watching. We made that. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.